Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss foreign currency swaps. What is a swap? That's the first thing we want to learn. Well, swap is when you exchange two things. So one individual is giving something to the, and the other individual and the other individual is giving something back to them. So they're swapping something. Currency swaps are financial tools used by companies that engage in cross-border capital investment. What does that mean? It means when you are a U.S. company and you want to invest in Europe or you want to invest in Asia, you want to invest in another country, and you need the currency of that country, you might involve yourself in a foreign currency swap. It's a form of mitigating financial currency risk or currency risk. You want to reduce this currency risk. Now, we heard about swaps when we talked about interest rate swaps. So let me show you what interest rate swap is. So you get into the idea of what is a swap. This way you, get a, you have a good idea. So let's assume we have company A and company B. Company A borrowed a million dollars. Company B borrowed a million dollars as well. Company A, they have an excellent credit. Therefore, they get a fixed rate at 5%. Fixed rate, which is they pay per year $50,000, if my math is right. Company B, they don't, they don't have the best rate, but they were able to get a variable rate at 4%. Let's say 5% as well. Let's say it started at 5%, but this rate is variable. Also, they have to pay 50000 now, why did they get a variable rate? Because they cannot get a fixed rate, because they don't have a good credit. But company B, they don't like this variable rate. They hate this variable rate. And they don't want to they don't want to take the chance of interest rate going up to six, going up to seven, eight, so on and so forth, because their payment will go up. Company A, company A is comfortable. Company A is saying, no, I think interest rate is gonna go, it's gonna go down. And therefore, I would rather have a variable rate because I think interest rate is going to go down to 4%. So what company A would do, since they have a good credit, they were able to get a fixed rate, and they are comfortable with a variable rate, what they will do, they will switch the payment. So they would say, okay, we'll take over your loan agreement, we'll take over your variable rate. I made it both 50000 just to tell you the value of them exchanging, it's about the future. Because B is not comfortable with a variable because if the rate goes up, they're not comfortable with that at all. A said, if it goes up, that's fine. We think it's going to go down. We're willing to take to take over this. So what they did is they exchange, they exchange the payments. That's what they did here. Now, in a currency swap, it's more complex because you're dealing with, it's not going to be complex for us, but you're dealing with exchanging of cash flows in different currencies. And here, what you are doing, you're not only exchanging the interest rate, you're only also exchanging the principal amount. So you're getting the amount from a in a foreign currency, giving it to the other party, the other party getting in the amount in their foreign currency relative to the other party, and they're exchanging that, and they're going to exchange that later at the end of the loan. The best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the primary reason is when companies, they need to finance, undertake a project by their subsidiaries in a foreign country. So let's take a look at this. Let's assume we have a US company. They want to finance a project in Germany. It's a US company. The company has few options. So if you want, if you need the money to invest in Germany, what can you do? Well, you can go to the US bank, borrow US dollar, convert to euros. But what's the problem here? You have a foreign currency risk. You're exposed to foreign currency risk. Or you can go to Germany and borrow money in Germany. Same concept. You have foreign currency risk. The German company may not, may not know who you are because you're not a German company. They may not be familiar with your financial statements, your credit risk, so on and so forth. They may even charge you a higher rate. Or you can set up a currency swap. And this is, this is what we're going to be discussing. The currency swap would remove this foreign currency risk. We'll see how. So because borrowing in Germany if that's what you want to do, it may not be favorable. 
because you are relatively not known for the German bank. You're not known in Germany. And therefore, you, even if you qualify for a loan, you may get a high, you may be imposed on a high rate. They may impose on you a higher payment. Therefore, what you would do is you will find a counterparty, another party, like another party in Germany, another company that want to invest in the U.S. And what you do, you will do a currency swap. Here's how it works. So suppose a German corporation, which we'll call Eurotac, looking to finance the construction of a new research and development center in the U.S. for $50 million. To finance this investment, obviously they need U.S. dollar. They're in, they're, they're, they're in Europe. On the other hand, we have a U.S. company, USA Motors, looking to invest 40 million euros in a manufacturing facility in Germany. Excellent. So the current exchange rate right now is 1.25 to euro. What does that mean? It means the 40 million euros equal to the 50 million dollar. What happened is this. They will find a bank that agrees to do what? To do this currency swap. Here's what's going to happen. If the U.S. company wants to, wants to borrow money, wants to borrow money, in US dollar, they are charged 7%. If the German company wants to borrow US dollar on their own, they're charged 9% because the, the German company, they're not known in the US. So if they want to borrow money in the US, they're going to charge them more, more than the US company. On the other hand, if the US company wants to borrow euros, they're going to be the, the bank in Europe will charge them 8%. If the German company wants to borrow in euros, in Germany, they will charge 6%. So what does that mean? The best thing to do is for the U.S. company to borrow in the U.S. at 7%, the German company to, to borrow the euros at 6%, and guess what? Exchange the, lo exchange the loan. Let's take a look at the example. So the U.S. company will borrow at 7 the euros, the, the German company would borrow at 6 from their corresponding countries. First, the U.S. company, they will go to the bank, borrow $50 million, at 7%. Perfect. Then the German company will go to their bank, they will borrow 40 million euros at 6%. Then they will find a bank that's gonna handle the deal, swap this money for them. So the US company will will submit a payment of 6 they, Obviously, they will submit the money to the German company and they will pay the interest rate. They'll submit it through the swap bank, obviously, but and then they pay, rather than paying the 7%, they will pay the 6% euro, euro, euro loan. Why? Because they're paying their loan. They're paying the euro loan because the European company also swapped their money to the US, to the bank, and the bank swapped the money. So the euro, now they have euros. So therefore, they pay 6% on the euro because that's what they, that's what they're paying for. Now, the German company will get will get the US dollar and will pay will pay 7% on the dollar which is 3.5 million and the US company is paying 2.4 million euros okay then they will then the swap bank will pass the payment to the US to the US company US Motors and US Motors will pay the bank so what happened is this overall here's what happened notice the bank the US bank the U.S. company is paying 7% to the bank, but they're paying 7%. They're getting 7% from the German company, so the net that they're paying is 6% in euro. Same concept for the German company. The German company is paying 6% to the European bank, but they're getting 6% from the U.S. company, so the net they're paying is 7%. So what ends up happening, and obviously they exchange the principal as well, so what, what obviously ends up happening the German company is only paying, is net paying 7% USD because if they wanted to get the loan on their own, it will cost them 9. The US company is paying 6% in Euro and otherwise they will pay 8% and everyone is happy and they saved money and they did not expose themselves to foreign currency risk. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs that's going to help you understand this foreign currency concept of foreign currency risk. It's very important that you know this topic inside out, being ready for the exam day. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.